video from me, Cheryl. This is my crafty and bookish and chatty about other things that interest me podcast. Uh, thank you for choosing to spend a little time with me. I know there are so many wonderful podcasts out there to watch and I do want to say to everyone who has taken the time to leave a comment on my, any of my first uh, three videos, thank you so much. I love it. And, um, you know, I don't, thank you for, for watching and subscribing. I'm up to nine subscribers right now, which is kind of... I don't know. It's kind of surprising, but good. And um, I hope that uh, anyone who watches uh, finds something fun or interesting or um, just enjoys spending a little crafty time together. I hope you have uh, a beverage of your choice, hot or cold. Um, and I know maybe a little snack if you want um, and your yarn needles hook um, whatever or um, just just enjoy a beverage um, anyway I'll wait for you while you go get one go get something I'm, I'm waiting Okay, good. <laughs> good, now we're all set. Um, and let's have a nice, let's have a nice time. Um, it's been a good week. And, oh, before I move on, um, my Ravelry username is Cappuccino136 on Ravelry and on Instagram. Feel free to look me up at either place and um, I know I'm not very great at giving a lot of details um, when I talk about my projects um, all all the yarn details or talk about my needle details or um, things like that uh, if if you see a project that I finished or that I'm working on uh, and you you want to know a little more about the pattern or the yarn or um, what needle size and things like that. Um, it's all on my Ravelry project pages and I will also put details in the uh, information box below the video. You can look there too um, with some yarn information, project information, pattern names, and book titles, authors, other um, other things that I talk about that I think you might want to reference or look up if you're uh, further interested in. Um, I, I try and put pretty good pro uh, episode notes in the information box. Um, I I'm not putting links there, um, but if if links would really be a big help to you and that's important for you, please make a comment and ask, um, and I will make an effort to make to work on that. And um, yeah, and um, all the all the comments that I've had so far. Um, have been really friendly and positive and kind and thank you so much again um, and I hope that if there is uh, something constructive that I can do to um, make things a little bit better if you can you can uh, feel free to in a in a constructive and polite way make a suggestion or um, a constructive request on something that uh, I need to work on. I know that ands and ums are pretty egregious. 
<laughs> I am aware of that and and oh, trying to improve on that and um, I also hope I will get a little bit better at some of the editing uh, I don't really plan on ever being a super polished um, super edited fancy podcast that's just not me that's just um, and it's not what I'm interested in um, but yeah it's it's been great and I am enjoying this and so I'm gonna keep on um, so anyway yeah it was a good week um, and I had a little adventure today is Saturday Saturday the 15th of June um, Friday I went on a little adventure to an, a local yarn shop LYS um, there aren't any really close to me um, but if if I am willing to to drive and make a, an, a kind of a big event out of it uh, there are several that I can go to um, and so I went to one a little uh, a little further away but not too far um, not outrageous that I've never been to and it was beautiful it was beautiful um, and I had a really nice time they have a bakery in the back with espresso, tea, macarons, um, and other baked goods. And I had I had a, a couple of macarons that were delicious, and um, a little sandwich, and um, enjoyed sitting and knitting a couple rows, and just looking around. I did take some very colorful photos to show how pretty it was in there. And I will include them at the end of the episode in the slideshow, uh, which I enjoy putting together. Um, I do. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, anyway, yeah. So that was the, the big adventure. And coming up tomorrow is, in the United States, tomorrow is Father's Day. So um, my sister is planning to come for... For a visit and um, yeah so we're gonna we're gonna have a good family time together and um, give dad some special dinner uh, he has asked for salmon which uh, nobody's crying about we love salmon so uh, that's gonna be delicious and yeah I'd like to talk to you for a minute about something that I've mentioned in passing uh, on earlier videos but you have not seen and that is my scrappy sock yarn blanket which I am I'm doing a granny stripe blanket so it is crocheted and it's pretty big now because I started it a couple years ago I'd have to look it up on Ravelry to find out exactly if it was 2016 or 2017. But um, here, is the current state. of the granny stripe scrappy blanket it's wide enough it will fit um just over not a lot of overlap but it will fit across my um full size or double size bed that i sleep on um i want to make this a really nice big blanket and i will either use it cozy up in bed or 
cozy up on the couch. Um, I'm not working on it now because it's too hot to have all that in my lap. <laughs> and I just kind of pick it up on occasion. I like to let scraps build up for a while and then just kind of get in the mood to work on it and then add, um, add a big group of stripes. Here in this bag I have some things prepared to go in. Scraps from socks and some scraps from shawls if they're, you know, a fingering weight uh, sock yarn or just a merino superwash. For the blanket, I don't care if it has nylon. Now, if it sucks, I really want a little bit of nylon in it. But, oh, this yarn makes me so happy. I love this scrap, and I can't wait to put that uh, stripe in when the weather gets cool again. I'll probably pick this up in the, in the fall, maybe October, November. Um, yeah. But I had mentioned it, and I just thought I'd show it a little bit. Um, now, there is a free pattern. I mean, really, this is so simple. You don't need much of a pattern, but there are some free instructions on um, Attic24, the, the crochet website. Also, I just looked up Granny Stripe on Ravelry and I found some other uh, pattern or recipes or instructions and a lot of them were for free. Um, so there's a lot of places you can find out how to do a Granny Stripe blanket. Um, also, I want to talk about sock yarn for a minute because... I do find that sock yarn is very versatile. I really like the sock yarn. I, I like a fingering weight yarn. That's probably one of my favorite uh, yarn weights to knit with. I just like a, a thinner, a finer yarn most of the time. Um, and I, I don't really like to knit with chunky, bulky, super bulky, jumbo. You're not going to see hardly any of that ever from me which is you know fine I know it's a huge trend and a lot of people are loving it and you can finish a project like lightning fast but um that's just not doesn't fit me and it, it I don't find it comfortable in my hands but anyway that was a tangent <laughs> <laughs> Are you here for the tangents? Anyway, back to sock yarn. I do find that sock yarn is very flexible. I, obviously, it makes great socks. I really like to use it for shawls, too, because it's easy care, um, especially if it's a super wash or a super wash in nylon. Um, it, it will last. Um, it's durable. It, um, and... It's just really good. Also, it can be good for a, a, a thin weight sweater because, again, uh, if it has nylon, it's going to be a extra durability for that sweater. And it comes in, sock yarn comes in so many fun colors, although other kinds of yarn come in fun colors too. But if you want like a crazy color cardigan, oh my goodness. You can be in sock yarn heaven with that, um, but also you can, do, there are solid sock yarns, and anyway, I sock yarn does not have to be limited to just socks. I think it's great for shawls and sweaters, um, and very versatile yarn, and that's what I wanted. It's Monday now. Uh, just about lunchtime, so that's what I plan to do after I fin finish filming this, is go get some lunch. Um, but let's keep talking. I left off talking about how I really enjoy sock yarn a lot, 
and I like it for different kinds of projects, not just socks. So I'm really curious um, if any of you also really like sock yarn and use it for different kinds of projects and what kinds of things you like to do with sock yarn um, that's not just socks. Also, let's have a little minute to talk about shopping because I did go to the local yarn shop um, and shopping for yarn and stashes and everything can be a bit of a hot topic um, but I just want to say a few things and just uh, how I feel a little bit um, I don't only shop at a local yarn shop and I I don't shop very often in person at a local yarn shop um, because they aren't that close to me. Um, I do shop at Joann's and I do shop online um, occasionally from Etsy. I also like webs uh, which is I think one of the biggest online yarn shops and it is also a, a local uh, brick and mortar yarn shop too with a giant giant warehouse which I've never visited there but I've seen a <laughs> shots of video of their warehouse and it's ginormous anyway so I kind of am uh, equal opportunity here and there different kinds of places shopper and um, my main purpose of going to the local yarn shop this week was to have a little adventure but also a friend of mine asked me um, if I could help her get a pattern that she couldn't purchase because she is not in the United States but it's a pattern that's only available in in the English translation um, the, the original pattern is Norwegian um, but the English translation is only available through the Ravelry local yarn store download program so um, since she lives in another country she couldn't get it herself so um i thought sure i'd love to and i'll have a little adventure going to a, a store i've never seen and have a little fun too um and it ended up becoming a little pattern swap because to repay me for the pattern that i bought for her she uh bought a ravelry download for me and the pattern that she bought for me which I'm so excited about it's been on my wish list in my Ravelry wish list for a couple years is the Cosette sweater pattern by Jennifer Wood so yay thank you Nikolai and it was fun uh, having a little adventure so I could do a little pattern swap with you and I hope you love the Norwegian Colorwork sweater that you're going to make. It's, I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Nicola is wonderful at colorwork. Um, I am terrible at colorwork. Um, yeah, that's not my thing. But she's fabulous. Um, so, I didn't buy any yarn while I was there. Um, not because I'm necessarily opposed to buying yarn, but I just couldn't settle down my mind and focus on what would I want if I did buy something. It was just, it was beautiful and a little overwhelming <laughs> in there. And um, if I had, if one thing had really caught my focus and I knew like, oh, that would be the perfect this or you know um this would be the great great for that project i i might have done but uh i just really was overloaded and there was no way i could pick out 
a stain at all. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun while I was there. And in general, I don't tend to shop regularly um, for a lot of yarn. Um, I tend to go maybe months, maybe many months without buying anything. And I like to work from stash. And then once I buy something, it kind of breaks the dam. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, buy a lot of things. And um, I might for 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 a while just be in shopping mode and then that will end <laughs> I'll be like stop um but yeah that's kind of how my shopping pattern is like long stretches of nothing and then break the dam go on a bit of a spree and then stop um, I know everybody deals with their stash and has shopping philosophies and shopping patterns that uh, can be very, very different from that. And um, I'm just explaining to you uh, what I do. And I do have a stash. I know there are people who don't have stash or work very hard to keep to a very, very minimal stash. Uh, behind me, you can see the top <laughs> of my, my stash, my bins of my stash. And then in the closet, I have uh, a big cardboard box and, and also a small collapsible canvas uh, storage of yarn. Um, so I do have a, a pretty good sized stash. Um, I wouldn't say it's ginormous, but it's not small. It's probably a very in between medium and large stash, I think. I don't know. Everybody measures stash differently too. <laughs> so what's a, what is a big stash to some people is different to other people so anyway that's that now let's look at some projects here is my top this is not going to be cropped. The yarn is going a little farther than I thought. Here is a, a very small short sleeve. Ooh, stitches down. I think everything got secured. I will double check on that later, but uh, it should not be a crisis. <laughs> so everything will be okay. So, um, but yeah, I'm super happy with how that's going and um, glad that glad that it's going to be a little bit longer than I thought. I think that's because I was a little conservative with how relaxed, how much positive ease I was giving myself. Um, 
But yeah, I think it's going to be wonderful. And I'm glad I'm doing a little bit of a sleeve. And that's that. Here is the Blue Sky Hug scarf. I've made a lot of progress on this. I'm really loving it. I love the colors. I love the lace. It's fun to work on. Um, and I've been thinking a lot. I've been having a little quandary about this. And um, let's also have, talk for a moment about giving handmade gifts. I've been wondering if this might make a good gift for someone. I'm going to a graduation party uh, in about eight days. And I've been thinking that that might be really pretty for her. Um, but then I've also been thinking, oh, she's you know, a, a young woman and she has her own fashion style and I know her, but I don't know her that well as far as her, her fashion tastes and um, her, you know, her favorite colors or things like that. So I had a lot of doubt, like, uh, I don't want to give it to her if it's really not something that she wants to, to wear, um, you know, because she probably likes really modern things, and this might just seem a little old-fashioned to her. Um, anyway, giving handmade gifts can be really difficult for us because we want them to be loved and appreciated, and... Um, we made them with love and joy, and we we want the person that we give it to to feel joy about it when we give it to them. And uh, no judgment on her. Um, it's just those kind of things just aren't for everyone. And that's why I don't give away many of my projects, because... Unless I know that person extremely well, unless they, most of the time, if I give something to someone, they've asked me, um, hey, I would really love a scarf, or I would really love, or my mom, my mom will say, oh, could you make a sweater for me um, like this in, in my favorite color? And that is, that's so much easier when you know that the person um, really wants it and you know the person, you're very close to that person. They're like a, a very good friend or a family member. And let's talk about books. I'm still very much enjoying listening and reading to the same three books that I was last week. Illumine by J Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Three Bags Full by Leonie Swan. And So You Want to Talk About Race by Ichoma Oluo. Uh, I recommend all of them. Um, and I want to talk about the last one for a minute. Uh, so you want to talk about race. Um, I have progressed a few more chapters. I think I'm on five or six. And this is definitely a really, really helpful book. Uh, there's a lot of information, a lot of insight. Um, and it's not a book that I, I feel should be rushed through. Um, it's good for listening as an audiobook, which I'm doing, but I think this book 
would also be excellent to have in text form, either paper, hard copy text, or uh, ebook text, um, because it is so full of a lot of things and, and taking notes or highlighting or um, she also occasionally suggests an exercise that you might do so you could just um, have your pen and paper there ready. Um, definitely a book I would reread uh, and come back to in a couple of years or, you know, check in with every once in a while um, because it's, it's, uh, it's really eye-opening and very helpful. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say about that. And I hope that whatever you're reading is uh, really great. And um, if you have any excellent book recommendations of, of things that, that you love, that you're really enjoying right now, go ahead and um, pop a, a good recommendation in the comments below. But I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope whatever beverage uh, you chose was delicious. And I am going to put a little slideshow here at the end, and you'll see some of the uh, local yarn shop and other, other little snapshots of things this week. And take care. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.